Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and today is Wednesday, April 12th. We are going to talk about books. I know you're shocked in a book review podcast. Um, Wednesday, April 12th also happens to be my birthday, which I just say because, you know, it's my birthday. It happens once a year. I'm not, you know, saying it to be like, hey, guess what? It's my birthday. Send me something. No, it's more just of, hey, it's my birthday. So I am happy and I'm having a good day. Um, my hubby made me breakfast in bed this morning, so you really can't complain about that. And now I get to talk about books, which is one of my favorite things in the world. I, I love to read and, you know, talking about books is almost as good as reading them. So I get to celebrate my birthday in some good ways today. Anyway, today's show, uh, on today's podcast, I will be talking about two books, um, Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham and um, Where Am I Now by Mara Wilson. Both of these books are um, memoirs or a collection of essays. And you could ask, are they autobiographies? Are they memoirs? Are they essays? What exactly, what genre do these books fall under? And I guess my quick answer would be all of them. I mean, I was doing a little reading on the difference between memoirs and an autobiography. And the truth is, is that those tr those terms can be used pretty much interchangeably. It's just, I think, more of the scope of a book. If it's an autobiography, it tends to be more about the author's whole life, uh, you know, up till this point, obviously, um, unless they're psychic, which, hey, that'd be an interesting, uh, uh, interesting autobiography. Interesting autobiography. My goodness, I can't talk today it's about their whole life tends to be in more chronological order, whereas a memoir um, often sp focuses on a specific aspect or time of a writer's life and might be written more in the style of um, essays. So they're very similar. Obviously, they uh, a memoir has autobiographical elements to it. But um, um, I was that weird kid that well, I was weird for a lot of reasons growing up, but my dad was a librarian. I think I've mentioned that before, and he was the K-12 librarian in my school. Interesting side note as we, because it's a tangent day, I went to school in a very small town in Montana. Uh, it's about a thousand people. It's probably a little smaller when I was a kid. I went to school kindergarten through 12th grade in one building. Uh, all in the same building. There was actually a separate building that um, you that there housed three grades. But the year that I would have gone there, my, um, there was a switch, and they moved my grade back over to the the quote unquote big school. So I never went to the smaller school. I was K twelve in in one building. I went elementary school on one side of the cafeteria, junior high and high school on the other side of the cafeteria. Anyway, my dad was the K twelve librarian, so. Makes sense if it's all one building, right? So I got to spend a lot of time in the library with my dad, not just, you know, when we'd go for class. And I was that weird kid that loved biographies. I loved biographies and autobiographies. I, I still remember exactly where the section was in my element on the elementary side of the library. And again, like the building, the elementary side was on one side of the library and the high school side was on the other side of the library. So everything was well defined in my in my school. I still remember where the um, autobiography biography section was. And I loved to grab books and um, peruse them and, and read them and just find out about people's lives. I've always loved learning about people's lives and uh, that was one of my favorite things about being a history major in college was more of the personal side of history 
I have friends who love political history, who love um, different types of history, but for me, it's always been more of the personal histories, more of the social histories, those sorts of things, learning how people lived, learning what happened in their lives. So I like to read autobiographies. I like to read about different times um, that people lived in and all of those sorts of things. So anyway, that just leads us to today's topics when I am discussing two books, uh, but uh, as I said, by Lauren Graham and Mara Wilson. Both could be described as memoirs or maybe a collection of essays. They, they aren't necessarily autobiographies, but they do tell some about both authors' lives. And we're going to discuss you know, mo both of those books in more detail. So now that I've given you this very long rambling introduction and you've learned many random facts f about me, including my birthday and my, my college major um, and my hometown, I think it's time to take a break. And when we come back, I will be talking about Lauren Graham's Talking As Fast As I Can. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Before the break, I mentioned that I will be talking about Lauren, Lauren Graham's book uh, that is called Talking As Fast As I Can with a subtitle of From Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and Everything in Between. So um, let me start off by saying that I really enjoy Lauren Graham as an actress. I would say that I love Lauren Graham, but I don't actually know Lauren Graham. So when I say I love Lauren Graham, I mean as an actress. I loved the, um, the original seven, se seven seasons of Gilmore Girls. Watched them all the way through. Um, I... I watched A Year in the Life, and that's not what this podcast is about. It wasn't my favorite, but I was really glad to visit that world again. I enjoy, I've enjoyed what I've seen of Parenthood. I haven't finished it. Um, I need to, I need to binge, binge watch that one of these days and finish off what I haven't seen. So I enjoy Lauren Graham as an actress, and I can definitely say that as a writer, I enjoy her. She's a really good writer. So if you enjoy good writing, then that's, uh, this is definitely, um, it, this definitely has that. Before I go too much further, I do want to give you the description of the book. And this is the description that they have on Amazon, just to give you an idea of what it is. And it says, in talking as fast as I can, Lauren Graham hits pause for a moment and looks back on her life, sharing laugh out loud stories about growing up, starting out as an actress, and years later, sitting in her trailer on the parenthood set and asking herself, did you... um?" make it. She opens up about the challenges of being single in Hollywood. Strangers were worried about me. That's how long I was single. The time she was asked to audition her butt for a role and her experience being a judge on Project Runway. It's like I had a fashion-induced blackout. In What It Was Like Part 1, Graham sits down for an epic Gilmore Girls marathon and reflects on being cast as the fast-talking Lorelai Gilmore. In the essay, What It Was Like, Part 2, reveals how it felt to pick up the role again nine years later and what doing so has meant to her. Some more things you will learn about Lauren. She once tried to go vegan just to bond with Ellen DeGeneres. She's aware that meeting guys at awards shows has its pitfalls. If you're meeting someone for the first time after three hours of hair, makeup, and styling, you've already set the bar too high. And she's a card-carrying REI shopper. My bungee cords now earn points including photos and excerpts from the diary Graham kept during the filming of the recent Gilmore Girls' A Year in the Life, this book is like a cozy night in, catching up with your best friend, laughing and swapping stories, and, of course, talking as fast as you can. So that's the description that they have of the book on Amazon. If you have watched Gilmore Girls, then you understand where the title comes from. That show has a lot of dialogue, a lot of very fast dialogue. And so the actresses who play um, Lorelai and Rory Gilmore had to, I 
can only imagine and learn a ton of dialogue and then be able to spit it out at rapid paces. So um, a few things about this book. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I really love Lauren Graham as an actress. And this book sounds like her. I mean, it doesn't sound like Lorelai. It, it sounds like what I expect Lauren Graham to sound like from what I've seen of her in interviews. Again, I don't know her. Um, I think we often look at celebrities and feel like we do know them, but we don't really. So it's always kind of fun to get a little peek into their lives. And um, that's part of what this is. The first part does read a little bit like a memoir or like an auto a bit autobiographical because she does talk some about her childhood, her parents um, growing up the experiences that she had and then her early years in acting and what that was like. And so that's fun to learn a little bit more about her. And then it was also fun to read um, the last part of the book where she does talk about the making of A Year in the Life. Uh, I believe the book was published before A Year in the Life actually was aired. So um, I, I read it after I, I had already watched A Year in the Life. So it was kind of fun to revisit some of that just to hear about her experiences and um, how much she loves the cast and loves the experience of being on that show and being back on the set and those sorts of things. It was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't, I, I can't give this book an unequivocal, I loved it. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, it made me laugh. It made me smile. Um, I, I, it is kind of like listening to uh, your, you know, hanging out with your best friend who's funny and quirky and well-spoken. And so I really enjoyed the book. It was a little um, scattered at times for me, I guess I'll say. It does, it does have those, the beginning and ending sections that feel um, more complete, but the middle feels like kind of goes off and onto a few tangents. Um, the essays are not chronological, which they don't have to be in a book like this, but it just felt a little scattered and a little incomplete at times. Um, I wanted a few more details in some of the essays. And maybe part of that is that that little bit of celebrity worship where, ooh, let's get a peek into somebody's life. But also, you know, if somebody is writing a memoir or a collection of essays like this, they are willing to open up parts of their lives. So it's not as though we're, we're pushing into that life. But, um, it, you know, I, I, I respect the author's privacy. Obviously, she can share what she wishes to share. I just feel like some of the stories didn't feel like they had a specific closure. So I felt like it was left dangling just from a, a reader's point of view, not from a um, ordinary person reading a book written by a celebrity point of view. But just from a reading point of view, I felt a little a little lost sometimes just because I felt like I needed a little more closure on some things or maybe a little more explanation. All of that is to say that I liked the book. Um, I enjoyed the book. I, I didn't absolutely positively love the book, but I really, really did enjoy it. And it was fun to hear her take on the Gilmore Girls, both past and, um, well, past now again, but a little more present than the original series. I I loved her writing style. She's funny. She's a very good writer. So I appreciated that. As I was um, thinking about this episode, I was going through and, and doing some reading as I often do. And I saw one one review. I think it was on Amazon. It might have been somewhere else. But the, the reviewer only gave the book one star. And they only gave the book one star because uh, they said, I love Lorelai Gilmore. This is not Lorelai Gilmore. Don't confuse the uh, the role with the actor. And I thought, well, duh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but of course it's not Lorelai Gilmore. She did not sit down to write a book as Lorelai Gilmore. She sat down to write a book as Lauren Graham. So if you go into this expecting this to just be Lorelai Gilmore, then you probably will be disappointed. There are certainly aspects of that character because Lauren Graham does play that character. So obviously there's some of Lauren Graham in Lorelai Gilmore. There's probably some Lorelai Gilmore in Lauren Graham, but don't sit down with this book and think it's going to be a book written by Lorelai Gilmore. It's not, even though it does talk about Gilmore Girls. So I do recommend this book. I think it was a lot of fun. Just uh, go into it knowing that, you know, there might be a few parts that 
and you might enjoy it perfectly well. Don't take, you know, I always say, don't take my word for it. Go actually read the book for yourself. Um, I, I do recommend it. I think it was fun. It did make me laugh. It did, um, it was enjoyable to revisit some of those old Gilmore Girls episodes that I watched when they originally came out. It was great fun to listen to, to listen to. I didn't listen to an audiobook. I read it, but to hear. Why do we use books? Why do we use words like here when we talk about books to read? Um, it was great fun to read and ex- uh, some of her experiences on filming the new season of Gilmore Girls. So it's a lot of fun. I keep saying that it's well written and it's it's a good quick read. And I recommend it if you need um, a good quick read. And if you're a fan of Lauren Graham as a, an actress, then you should try you should check this out um i i did appreciate a lot of things about it and lauren graham from what i have seen of her and read in this book seems like a really um nice down to earth person she seems like someone that you'd want to go get a beer with if you drink beer or you know go get a coffee with if you want to make it a little more gilmore girls esque she just seems like she would be a lot of fun to talk to and that she would be interesting and interested in a lot of topics so uh that is my review of talking as fast as i can from gilmore girls to gilmore girls and everything in between uh by lauren graham And when we come back, we are going to take another quick break. But when we come back, I will be talking about the book, Where Am I Now?, written by Mara Wilson. So stay tuned, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Uh, Before the break, I was talking about Lauren Graham's book, Talking As Fast As I Can. And now that we've come back from that second break, we will be moving on to Mara Wilson's book, Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame. And you may know Mara Wilson. She was a child actress in films like Mrs. Doubtfire and uh, Miracle on 34th Street and Matilda three of my absolute favorite movies. I thought she was adorable. I loved those. I loved her in those movies. And so again, I I keep thinking about that, that review that said, this is not Lorelai Gilmore. Well, this is not that little girl from those movies. <laughs> she was an actor then, and she was a young actor, and now she is an adult. And so it's interesting to watch the progression as she describes it from childhood actress to adult. So again, let me give you the uh, synopsis of the book. Again, this is from Amazon, and it says, a, formal ch- a former child actor best known for her starring roles in Matilda and Mrs. Doubtfire. Mara Wilson has always felt a little young and out of place. As the only kid on a film set full of adults, the first daughter in a house full of boys, a valley girl in New York, and a neurotic in California, and a grown-up in the world, and a grown-up in the world still remembers as a girl as a little girl. Tracking everything from what she learned about sex on the set of Melrose Place to discovering to discovering in adolescence that she was no longer cute enough for Hollywood. These essays chart her journey from accidental fame to relative but happy obscurity. They also illuminate universal struggles like navigating love and loss and figuring out who you are and where you belong. 
Candid, insightful, moving, and hilarious, Where Am I Now introduces Mara Wilson as a brilliant new chronicler of the experience that is growing up female. So again, that is the description of Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame. And as I said, I loved Mara Wilson in those movies. She was an adorable and precocious young child. And it sounds like she was pretty adorable and precocious in real life. Obviously, we're not seeing the uh, the same person as the role that she's playing. But I did often wonder, I did often wonder where she had gone after, after her childhood. And, you know, a lot of childhood act, uh, child actors have some issues later in life. I was happy to see that, um, she hadn't fallen into those those issues. She is not acting right now that I remember from the book. She's doing she she does act. I shouldn't say that. She's just doing different things. She um she has a show, her own show um on stage. She uh kind of she's done stand up, I think. She's done a variety of things. She does a lot of writing and then she wrote this book. And uh like the first book I spoke of, this is very well written. She's obviously an intelligent person and an intelligent writer. So that helps, I think, for me. I, I do sometimes tend to be a book snob, and so I like when books are well-written or at least well-edited. Um, and this one definitely is both. It's, it's very well-written. But what I really liked about this book is how personable it is. She does write of, you know, if you're reading it from a, from a celebrity standpoint, and you want to learn more about what it was like on the set of Mrs. Doubtfire and acting alongside Robin Williams and Sally Field. There is, there are those things. If you want to learn about, you know, some of her other movies, that those things are in there as well. And so that's fun. But then what was most compelling for me was what happened after her acting career. And one of the things that actually happened while she was still acting was that her mother died. She was very young when her mother died. So her life changed a lot in that moment. And then reading more about just how she grew up. And there was that one line in the description that said, learning that she was no longer cute enough for Hollywood, that adolescence is so hard to begin with. And then to go through it in Hollywood, to go through it with casting uh, people and, and, directors and producers and whatever it is in that world that look at you and say, well, no, you're you're too fat, you're too short, you're too whatever, your nose is a weird shape. I don't know what they say, but I, I can only imagine how thick of a skin you'd have to have. And again, adolescence is so hard. I can't imagine being what I was as a 13 year old, completely freaked out about my body and the way it was changing in the first place and then being told all of those things. So I really appreciated the way she wrote about those experiences and navigating those experiences, especially as a young girl um, whose mother was no longer in the picture, whose father was very supportive and very helpful. But, you know, that's a different dynamic. And then writing about, um, I also really appreciated her writing about her struggles with some mental health issues. And I think that is a topic that we don't talk about enough, or we certainly don't talk about in a way that normalizes it, because mental health is an issue that many people face a, a, a variety of things you know sometimes i think people think mental illness oh this horrible big scary thing that's going to lead to tragedy and the truth is that many of us suffer from and should i even say suffer many of us experience some kind of mental health issues and there are things that can be done there are lots of ways to deal with it but not talking about it it just adds to the stigma of oh the big scary thing that is that we should never talk about and we should be ashamed to talk about etc so i really appreciate when someone like ms wilson writes so candidly in her book about experiencing things and going through life and figuring out how to navigate life with her own unique uh, perspective and her challenges and just figuring those things out. I really appreciated that. So I will go ahead and say that I did love this book. I thought it was, again, well-written. It's engaging. It's funny at times. It's a little bit heartbreaking at times. I mean, just listening to her experiences, it is... Um, it's fun to learn what happened to that little girl who was so adorable in those movies to find out what she's doing now. And um, I follow her on Twitter. Uh, actually, I follow Lauren Graham on Twitter as well, but she is uh, very present on Twitter and she's very funny and very engaged in uh, the activities of the world. And 
So that's, she just seems to have grown up. I, do, I know she doesn't need my seal of approval. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. We're never going to meet. But she just seems to have grown up into a, a pretty well-adjusted young woman, considering all the things that happened in her childhood and considering some of the things that she has struggled with. So I'm happy for her. Again, I don't know her. She doesn't know me. She doesn't care if I'm happy for her. But it, it's nice to it's nice to read a book like this that does give you it, it kind of gave me hope in the world I don't know um, Lauren Graham's book actually did too because it's nice to just read something that is is engaging and um, it talks about this book talks about struggles and it talks about things that are very real and very present in many people's lives but to read them with uh, the they're written with honesty. It seems like honesty, a little bit of humor, a lot of heart. And so uh, I definitely, definitely, definitely enjoyed this book. I loved this book. I would recommend this book. I am now repeating myself by saying this book way too many times in one section. So that is, I think, a good place for me to stop babbling at you and maybe go eat some birthday cake because what's a birthday without cake, right? Uh, I would like to thank you for joining me today as we discussed Talking as Fast as I Can by Lauren Graham and Where Am I Now by Mara Wilson, two books that I definitely recommend for you to read, two books that are similar in that they are written by quote unquote celebrities, you know, people that we have watched on the big screen, on the small screen, but um, then to learn a little bit more about their lives, but also to see them as, as human, because obviously both of these women are human. They are not the characters that they portray. They are not just this sort of iconic image of however we perceive them, especially Mara Wilson, who is no longer six, amazingly enough. <laughs> and she's, she's moved on to doing other things and accomplishing other things. So I recommend both of them. They're enjoyable, and I think you will also enjoy them. But that, of course, is up to you and whatever style of writing and uh, whatever genre of books you like to read. So again, thank you for joining me. As always, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download these podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher, as well as any of the apps that you use for your mobile devices. And you can follow us on f social media. I would love to hear from you on social media. So um, you find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Tumblr even. We are GSMC Book Review. You can find us and let, it, let me know what your favorite books are. Let me know if you've read these books and what you thought. Did you love them? Did you hate them? Why? And I hope you will join me next time as I am discussing two young adult books, a uh, series actually. One is uh, The Menagerie and the other is the, oh, there's a name for it. And I just, The Magisterium. Thank you. My brain just shorted out for a minute. The Magisterium series. So I hope you'll join me next week for my discussion of those books. In the meantime, you go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.